have Marianne Elliott today, who is here all the way from New Zealand. I'm so thrilled to have you here. Thank you. Uh, I discovered Marianne's work initially um, through her program that's called 30 Days of Yoga that I actually did online in the comfort of my own home, even though she's all the way in New Zealand. <laughs> so it's a real treat to have her here. Tell us a little bit about what 30 Days of Yoga is. Sure. Uh, so 30 Days of Yoga is an online course. Um, we use video, uh, live phone calls, community forums, and daily emails. And it's designed to help you either start or if, um, if like me, you had one and lost it, restart a home yoga practice. I know from experience that a little bit of yoga uh, done every day has a lot more impact actually um, than maybe going to a great class once a week. So I really wanted to support people to do that at home because I know how hard it is. Mm -hmm. You know, we know it's good for us yeah. and we have the intention, but we're all so busy and there are so many demands on our time. So I wanted to create a kind of um, a vessel or a container that would help you make the space to take care of yourself in this way. One of the things that was so great is that it is actually one practice that you do every day, the same practice. Mm -hmm. And that exercise alone, first of all, made me realize how much I was like, I want to do something different every day. Mm -hmm. But there's this real beauty in doing that one practice every day mm -hmm. to like deepen that practice, your relationship with that practice in your body. And there's plenty of change that's still happening yeah. every day, even though it's the same, you're... You know, it's, yeah. you're weaving through different changes in your own body, your own awareness. Yeah. And it's a very conscious choice because what I find in my yoga practice, and I think this is the same in our creative work, is that um, there's a lot of um, power in creating uh, structure. Yes. And then within that structure, then you can really play and you can find where's the space, where are the edges, mm -hmm. where can I soften. Uh, but I think in our daily lives, there's so much variety and there's so all, you know, a lot of stimulation, a lot of change. So your home yoga practice um, can really become that safe, structured container that you really explore in. And um, I think my experience is then you actually have more room mm -hmm. to play. So there's this time where I will be working so much and I think mm -hmm. a lot of people get in this space where we're just work, work, work so much and I, I know and I'm feeling burnout, I'm feeling overwhelmed, mm -hmm. I haven't had a chance to connect with my body and I'll, you know, yeah. sometimes days, sometimes weeks mm -hmm. and I almost get like, I feel like almost like crying a little bit, like I just feel like I know that's what I need to give to myself mm -hmm. but I, we almost start avoiding it a little yeah. bit. What do you recommend when it's feeling so far away, like mm -hmm. to help bring yourself back? Yeah. Well, I, I have a lot of practice in this. <laughs> I've been there myself a lot. And so um, I, what I find works for me and from my experience works for a lot of people is connecting with two things. Um, and one is joy or play because there's a lot of power and joy and playfulness. And that's often what we've lost. We've really lost that sense of play, the sense of fun in our yoga practice. It's become something we should do, something we ought to do, and it becomes really heavy. And that heaviness is, you know, becomes a barrier. We resist it, we don't like that feeling. And the other part of it, which for me is probably um, the most critical thing I've learned from yoga is to be kind, mm. you know, to be really kind to ourselves because it's so easy to make the yoga practice just another part of our lives that we expect so much from ourselves, that we, uh, we set high standards and then we kind of set ourselves up to fail and beat ourselves up. Mm. So if there's one theme throughout the 30 days, and I don't know, Willow, if you can uh, yeah. agree with this, Absolutely. but the primary theme for me is self-kindness. And uh, I, I say often that when we can meet ourselves on our mat exactly where we are with kindness, then we start to be able to do that in the rest of our lives. And what I had to learn was that um, until I could meet myself, 
with kindness, with forgiveness, with softness, uh, there would always be a limit to my ability to meet other people in that way. And uh, that, for me, is perhaps, you know, the, the unexpected gift of the, of the practice. I know you've heard from so many people that mm -hmm. need her course so much and, and we, we think we have no time, right? I mean, we're all very, very busy people. Mm -hmm. And that um, those are the, you know, us super busy people that are doing so much, we're precisely the ones that need this. Yeah. So you've created a program that is specifically for that. Yeah, absolutely. Because for me, it's, you know, it's really heartbreaking that the people who need it the most feel they can't do it. And a big part of the barrier often is that they think they need an hour every day. Um, that can so, be very hard to find an hour. Seriously, yeah. you know. And it, particularly for people who have children, it can be actually impossible. Right. And what I know is that I know that 15 minutes will make a difference. Yeah, even 10 minutes, five minutes. Absolutely. You know, really, if you take five minutes and give that to yourself and make space and get on the mat and breathe, you know, and just soften, it could make all the difference to your day. So this course, you know, 30 days of yoga for people who are too busy to do yoga um, is for them, it's for us. So you are a part of, tell us a little bit about Yoga in Action. Sure. Yoga in Action is, um, it's part of the Off the Mat Into the World organization that I'm quite deeply involved in. And Yoga in Action is a, a, a workshop really, it's a course, a curriculum that uses the tools of yoga and the skills that we develop when we're practicing yoga to support us in our work in the world. So it's about getting clear on your purpose mm. and you know, using yoga as a tool for clarity. And it's about uh, using yoga as a tool for self-care so that once you're clear on your purpose and you're really working in line with your purpose, it's so easy to overwork because you're so passionate, right? So the second part of it is really about self-care and ensuring that you're keeping yourself uh, well enough to sustain the work. A big part of the yoga in action is about collaboration, huge part of it. And it's really grounded in a lot of research that um, is showing that change work, whatever kind of change work that might be, whether it, you know, it's what we think of as traditional activism or whether it's service work in the community or just you know, your creative work, is much more sustainable when we do it in collaboration. So Yoga in Action is basically a workshop that I teach um, and that a lot of people, I think there's a bunch of people now around the US teaching it, that helps you make those connections, you know, using those tools of yoga to get clear on your purpose, to get committed and grounded in the practices that sustain you, and to find your community to collaborate with. And I want to get really specific about that because I'm learning so much. I'm learning that when I work in collaboration, it's not only more sustainable because the work is spread, although that's a part of it, but also if you choose the right collaborators, people who you trust and who trust you and with whom you have mutual respect, they're also going to call you on it if you're overextending yourself. Um, just before I left to come here, my two key collaborators in a project that I was planning for September basically called me out and said, you know, we're excited about this, but are you really being honest about your capacity to do it? And I was like, of course I am. You know, I'm really excited about it. I'm, all, I'm there. And they both said, hmm, can you go away? and get really quiet and be really honest with yourself because we don't think you have the capacity. Mm. And I was like, what? <laughs> you know? And they were right. And we canceled it. Wow. And so that's an, a big part for me of the sustainability of collaboration is that people will, you know, if you give them the permission, they will keep you honest.
So what is next for you? What's next for me is very exciting. I, um, I wrote a book and the book is going to be published um, by Penguin New Zealand in March next year. And the book is a memoir. It's actually the story of my experience working for the United Nations in Afghanistan, which was, as you can imagine, pretty intense. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I went into the job with, you know, nearly a decade of experience in human rights work and humanitarian work in conflict zones. But it was, you know, a notch up. I'm going to say, like, Intense. Afghanistan is like a notch up from anywhere yeah. I'd been before. And I didn't really have the tools to support myself and sustain myself. And so my, the first part of my story is basically what happens when you take on really powerful work without practices to take care of yourself. And things kind of go a little bit pear-shaped. And I get myself into a fairly depleted and um, pretty burnt-out space. And then I decide to stay in Afghanistan and learn how to take care of myself in that context so that I can do what I feel called to do, which is to take care of the people who are affected by the conflict. So that's the book, and it's where really I deepen my um, yoga practice was in Afghanistan. It's where I started my meditation practice, where I began for the first time a daily writing practice. And it seems a little odd to be, you know, in a war zone with so much going on, with like, you know, emergency work to do, and I'm taking time out to do my yoga and you know, do my meditation and write my journal. But I learned that, that I had to do that in order to do the work. So that's the book. It's coming out in March. And um, I am hoping to create a, uh, some kind of online course that shares with others this, the, those tools, those practices. Because my hypothesis is that if I could learn to take care of myself, um, you know, make time, to connect uh, with myself, to you know, sit still, to soften, to relax in the middle of a war zone, then you can do it wherever you are. More than the sum of their parts. This world's a play we are casting. Any actor can tell you. They're more than the sum of their parts. They're more than the sum of their parts. They're more than the sum of their parts.